Hi everyone, I'm going to do an art journal page today and I'm starting with gelatos but you don't have to have gelatos and there are also all kinds of other stuff that I don't even <laughs> know the names for it but this I got in a happy mail and it reacts with water I've got some of this that acts like the gelatos this is campus and it says basic poster paint and I've got some from the cheap store. They again react with water. So all, all so sorts of uh, <laughs> almost like gelatos. But what I'm starting to do is just smear paint on as my first layer. And I'm looking for spring colors. <laughs> <laughs> if I can uh, call it, it that. Now you don't, again, you don't have to have gelatos. You can do the same thing with acrylic paint or with um, water sellable oil pastels. If you've got them, just use a baby wipe to smear the paint. Otherwise, it really doesn't matter. Again, also with acrylics. So, and if you want, you can do watercolors. Uh, after that, I'm planning of on gluing a paper napkin so I'm going to just start putting down random a paint colors on my page yellows and soft pinks and a little bit of a soft green and as I said, this is quite random. And it's just the first layer. So we'll see. Uh, let's see. I know I'm not a, a fan of pink, but it depends on the shade. <laughs> I want lots and lots of colors all around. Did I use this? I don't remember. Or was it this one? This one I used. So let's use this one. You can also overlap them if you feel like it. It really doesn't matter. Just have fun spreading it around. Hmm, this is a neon yellow. I'm wondering how it will <laughs> act. So as you can see, I'm not really concerned too much about the shades. Let's add a little bit of this soft blue just in several places we'll see let's hope i will get something nice and maybe this green okay I think I've got a nice coverage here and now for the baby wipe and if you have white then you can also spread it around and it will give you an in-between shades but really not that necessary so finished with the first <laughs> laying down layer so let's get this out of the way and now I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm just going to start smearing. Now uh, I think I'll start with the lighter colors and then move on to the darker ones. Now sometimes I spray my page because it just helps to spread 
the gelatos or the poster paint or whatever you want to call them. Now I'm not too concerned about coverage because as I said this is just the first layer. I just want some kind of paint in the background. So as, as you know, always starting with some kind of mess and then working on it. So here is the first layer and now I'm going to glue a paper napkin. Now, if you don't have to have the same paper napkin. I'm using the paper napkin because I like the pattern. You can, uh, instead, you can use, if you have stamps, and I'm using the paper napkin more for the texture it will give me. So, if you don't have any paper napkins, or if you ha don't have something with this kind of pattern, you can take the white backing of another paper napkin and glue it down, then stamp whatever you want in the background. So, now I'm taking a diluted white glue, that's what I use for paper napkins. Two thirds white glue, one third water, and a soft flat brush. So I'm just going to put down glue all over. Trying to be quick about it because it's really doesn't matter. Just make sure you cover the whole page. If you don't cover the whole page, you will have some kind of um, air bubble underneath that can be dealt with, but if you can, just make sure that your whole page is covered with glue. So, now I'm going to put the paper napkin. I'm not concerned about wrinkles. I like wrinkles. I want the texture. So I'm also gonna just move it a little bit to create texture. And again, this is up to you how much texture you like. Now you're, I'm going over with the, with the glue. It acts in two ways. First of all, it flattens The wrinkles I want wrinkles but I don't want them to stand out so that's the first thing second is it create it's it creates some kind of a seal to your page so and make sure that you work with a lot of glue you want it to slide on your paper napkin and not to drag so it won't tear and always with the flat of the brush let it glide and most of the time I will work from the inside towards the outside. It really depends on what I'm trying to do. So I've got now lots and lots of glue here that needs to, <laughs> to dry and that's the only downside of this. So when this is dry, I'll come back and we'll continue. Okay, so this is almost dry and because I'm going to use wet stuff on top of it, I'm not really concerned. I trimmed the excess of the paper napkin and now I'm going to add some watercolors on top. If you don't like watercolors or don't have them, you can dilute acrylic paint, you can use inks, whatever you have and I'm going to use I think some dark green at least that's what I'm aiming for and I'm tr I'll try and start with that and we'll see it's not really planned and I'm just going to put it down and we'll see where it gets me I want it to spread that's why I use the paper napkin and why I said that you can use 
um, white backing of a paper napkin. I wanted the effect that you get when you put something watery and it really doesn't matter what, if it's the watercolors or inks or whatever and how it spreads on the paper napkin. Uh, that's part of what why I'm using it. I really like how watery paint is reacting with the texture that you get from a paper napkin. It also can be done with tissue paper but the texture is a little bit different. So Just playing with all kinds of shades of green, green turquoise, and even helping it along with a little bit of water, so it will it would spread. And I don't care where it goes. So I'm going to do this corner also. And right now I'm just playing with it. I'm not sure where I'm going with this stuff. I just want to spread some on the page. Again, water, just helping it along. Basically, water will go where water is, <laughs> and I'm sorry if it's not a, a good explanation. That's the, the best I can do. If I will uh, put a trail of water like this, then the, the water with the paint will go there. So that's how, that's the only way that I know how to, let's say, control watercolors. I'm thinking of adding a little bit of an olive green to the mix. I don't know why. As I said, just playing. And what I like about this is that it's translucent and I still get the colors that I put on my first layer. So I've got all kinds of shades of in between and interest going on in the back. That's part of building the layers. The only thing that I do try to do is I'm adding water where I don't want a harsh line. I want it to blend into the background. That's the only thing I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. Adding where I think more paint is needed and then adding water when I want it to, to move around, to disperse, to <laughs> blend into. And if it's too much water and now it's not vibrant enough for you, you just go in and you add more paint where you want it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, I'm in love with this background. I can almost leave it alone as is and not even do a focal point because I've got all these butterflies but I'm going to do a focal point. I was planning on using this uh, stencil and just stencil part of this very large butterfly. And I'm not sure about it, but I'm just going to go with it. What's the worst that could happen if it doesn't look okay? It doesn't look okay. I will do another <laughs> hard journal page. I don't care. So, now I just need for this to dry before I'm doing any stenciling, so I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and first I thought I would do some turquoise 
<laughs> because that's my favorite color but then I decided that no I'm going with I've got here uh, aubergine dark purple I've got dark maroon and I've got magenta and now I'm just thinking if I want my a uh, butterfly like this or like this <laughs> mm. okay I'm going like this don't know why just decided it on the spot okay so I, for the body of the butterfly I'm going with the dark purple I'm taking a makeup sponge and I'm dabbing it to get rid of the excess and I'm starting to stencil now I've got texture underneath from the paper napkin so sometimes you just need to dab a little bit more just to make the paint go inside and if it doesn't work then you can always uh, wait for everything to dry and do some fixing with permanent markers or gel pens all kinds of um, markers just to make the edges more uh, defined so I'm now uh, taking the magenta and I'm starting with the magenta here Now, if you want to cover a, whatever is going on in the back, like this a butterfly, then you will probably need a few layers. If you are really, really concerned about a covering, then first use gesso and then go for whatever paint you want. I'm not concerned about it. I don't care if it's uh, showing through, so I'm just going to stencil away. <laughs> Although I do uh, repeat the areas just so the color will be more defined. But otherwise I don't care. Just going over where I think it's not enough. So now that I have less paint, when you have less paint on your uh, sponge, I'm moving to the next color so it would be easier to blend the two of them. Of course, I can also take a little bit of the magenta, a little bit of the purple, and just create a blending in between. Whatever works for you. Just wanted to merge more organic in between. I'm thinking that for the ends of this butterfly, I'm moving on to the darker purple again and letting it mix again with the other shade of purple, just so I won't have harsh lines and there will be a graduate move between the shades. Yeah. I can also already see that I will have to do some I think I will need some working with markers just to make everything come together I'm taking just a little bit more of the magenta here where it's not enough and adding 
and yeah this is it so finished with the stencil let's do something with the leftover paint so as usual just reaching for one of my notebooks for leftover paint I can either just smear it and create a background or I can now just take this because I've got the stencil on my desk and add it to another page that I smeared leftover paint and that's how I have so many painty papers to play with collage papers to do all kinds of stuff and it doesn't matter where anything goes just using the leftover paint having fun with it not overthinking it doesn't matter i'm using this stencil mostly for the pattern and not so i will have a distinct butterfly on the page okay so this is it and now i'm st i'm still having more more paint so I'm again just using it and I'm just as you can see just doing this you can do whatever you want you could you can do circles you can do whatever you can use brushes I'm just using the same makeup sponge I've used for the stenciling and having fun with it and I still got lots and lots of paint so okay so I'm going to a uh, let this uh, dry this what i've stenciled on the art journal page and i'm going to use this <laughs> the left what is left from the paint because we don't waste anything and then i'll be back okay so finishing touches I found this marker just because and it really doesn't matter which one just because the color works for me and I want to just make some contour line and kind of connect the areas I don't have to it's just something that I feel like doing and yeah So right now I'm just using this dark purple uh, marker and I'm thinking just so here it will stand out I'm going to use this gel a uh, yellow marker I don't know we'll see I want it to stand out that's why just to make it a little bit more defined on the page i really like all the details that i have on the butterfly but sometimes you just need to <laughs> connect the dots yeah something like that Okay, almost. Just for a little bit more definition. And here I don't like how the stencil ends with this harsh line, so I'm just changing it. 
it's not set in stone you can change whatever you want yeah not sure if the yellow that i was planning on to do here will work because i'm going all around with this purple so i'm not sure <laughs> we'll see not that important You see, I'm just adding, well, let's say details, because it seems to me a little bit too disconnected. I'm doing the same thing here. Okay, almost. More like it. Yeah, really more like it. And let's see. Good enough for me. Although it's <laughs> a little bit like out of the blue. There is a yellow line there. I don't care. I like it. That's my page. I really like what's going on here. How i have all these translucent layers so that's it for me i hope you liked it thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments down below i'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now